Yeah, if, if all the speakers will make sure you, uh, for, may, I know the audience can hear you, but for the uh, camera, if you'll make sure you speak right into the microphone, that'll be very helpful. Hi, my name is Kevin Harris. I'm with the Guild of Software Architects, and I'm here tonight to talk about an app that we're currently prototyping and working on. It's called Goods. It's a mobile app that helps people who are trying to find goods and services online. We like to think of it as a completely new way to buy, sell, and trade online that is specifically designed to help small businesses get noticed. So basically, how does it work? Goods is a real-time messaging app that helps connect act uh, actively searching buyers of goods and services with small businesses who are eager to sell but lack a significant online presence, such as a website or an eBay store. So let's go through a little example of how this works. So let's say you start a new business. Let's say you start this comic book store. All right, so like any small business person, you're gonna have the same problem that everyone else has. You've got great inventory, you've got the location, but you're just not getting enough customers. Sure, you're getting some foot traffic, but you really need to sell online to make a big impact. So when you start talking to your friends and family or even professionals, they, they give you the typical advice. You need to pay to build a website. You need to pay for e-commerce integration. And maybe if you're really aggressive, you need to set up an eBay store. And then what do you do? You wait and you wait and you wait for the customers. So you pay for all this. Yay, you have a website. Yay, you get on eBay, um, sort of. You got to manage this and they get a cut of everything. <clears throat> But still, after all that work, you still have no customers. Okay, so you got to fork out more money. You got to pay for SEO or search engine optimizations. You got to pay for Google ads. And maybe you dish out some extra cash for fa Facebook and Twitter ads. And then what do you do? You do some more waiting. This is a broken system, in my opinion. It's bad for buyers and sellers. Buyers are forced to search online and dig through results, which clearly are biased towards people who pay for a lot of ads. And for sellers, sellers are being judged not on the quality of their products or services, they're being judged on the, how much money they spend on website SEO and, and online ads. So this brings up our app that we're working on called Goods. So how does this help sellers? Sellers can use the Goods app to describe the products and services that they offer. Sellers are not required to list their inventory or upload like a million photographs of what they sell. They just answer some category questions about what they, what they, the products and services that they offer. For example, if we have a comic book store, we could have products that are in used collectibles, comic, and let's say we're selling something that's Silver Age. We also sell new comic books, so we're gonna be in a category also called product, new, collectibles, comics, and other. So how does this work for the buyers? Buyers don't search, this is the big difference. What they do is they use the app to post a request to a category. For example, they could post a request to product, use, collectibles, comic, silver age, and say, I'm looking for a Fantastic Four number three in at least fair condition. This is where we do the goods hookup. The server basically finds matching sellers, and buy, uh, sellers that can fit the bill, and then we send out notifications um, about the potential buyer which is online. Once the notifications are sent, the buyer gets notified of how many sellers were notified. Let's pretend that 12 sellers were notified that someone's searching for this comic book. So sellers and notifications, how does this work? Each seller reads the notification and makes a decision to either pass or engage the potential customer in a private chat session. Most small business owners know their products very intimately or their services, and so it's very easy for them to pass or engage without much thought on the, this topic or whatever the product is. This is important because this is the power of being a small business owner is that you're much more nimble than a larger company. So in our example, our, one of our sellers could say, hey, I actually have this comic book. I'm going to engage this potential client. And the guy says, hey, I have this comic in fair condition. I'm asking 200 plus shipping. See the pic. So you send a picture right there in the chat stream of the app. And the potential buyer says, hey, okay, can I see the inside cover? The seller takes a picture and shows it and says, okay. The buyer is interested and says, how about 180 instead of 200 and how much to ship it? So this kind of process we think is good for buyers and sellers. We can help buyers find unusual products and services, and we can reintroduce competition into the online marketplace by bringing more sellers to the bargaining table. We can help small businesses that have little or no online presence become discoverable by allowing them to use their free time to pursue new clients that they get notified by by the app. Okay, going forward, what we plan? We're currently working on minimal viable products or MVP for both Android and iOS devices. We want to introduce these into conventions 
where people buy, sell, and trade collectibles such as comics and toys, vintage clothing, sports memorabilia, coin stamps, you name it, whatever is collectible, we want to put it in there as a test. Okay, money, how do we make money on this? Well, buyers can always use the app for free, but sellers can use it free for a limited trial offer. And then we have to make a decision. Are we going to charge them a flat fee per month? Or are we going to charge them like some kind of cost per customer that they decide to engage with? Also in the future, I'd like to have the app act as a portal or a gateway portal for credit card and debit purchases where we get some small percentage off the top. Needs, wants, desires. Um, I'd love to find a tech co-founder that, okay. No. I nearly made it. <laughs> Very close. There's stay over here, huh? So, uh, so how are you positioning yourself as different from like a hundred, I'm not being facetious, but like hundreds of other websites that bring sellers and buyers together? I mean, being able to take a pick is, I don't think is exactly groundbreaking. So how, I mean, how are you, how are um, you differentiating yourself? I, I just think targeting a crowd like millennials, they really, they really live their lives through a cell phone. So I think there's an opportunity to introduce a completely new app that is focused on this. I like to think of it as kind of like Craigslist turned on its head, where you don't post things that you sell, you post what you want, we send out notifications, and those, those sellers have an opportunity to engage the, those potential customers. So, I mean, so if you don't drill down on the competition and you understand how you actually are different, not from your view, but from your customer's view. Um, well, we've, uh, we've searched online and not really found any kind of mobile app that does this. So, I mean, I've asked several people, if you can tell me one, that'd be great. I'd actually would like to use this app for my own personal business, the Guild. So I've not really found anything that allows me to reach out and find new customers like this. Okay. So to be fair, I'm not claiming it's completely new. I just think this is a, a, a better opportunity to make it work, I guess. What was the genesis? Where did the idea come from that, that you saw? Um, the idea for the app actually originated with my own. Uh, so right now I have the, a new startup called the Guild of Software Architects. We are a code boot camp in Frisco, Texas that helps people get into new careers in mobile development for Android and iOS. So, um, and also my, my mother desperately wanted to create a flower shop, which she did do, and I helped her even make a website for it. And one of the problems she always had was she simply didn't have the budget to spend on marketing. There were people out there looking for her service, but they never could find her because everything, when you Google search for something, it's completely slanted towards companies that pay extra money. And I just think like, if, if, you're, if you're a customer and you have money to spend, you should be able to have a better experience and just put out a request and say, look, I want this product or service and have people take notice of it and approach you instead of us spending all, these, all this time searching online and trying to find something. I think that's just a system that favors Google and people who sell ads. I think it's upside down and broken, personally, in my opinion. Um, next question. So um, I, uh, I buy a lot of things online. I pretty much buy everything online. Uh, I've also sold a lot of things online, so I'm pretty familiar with both sides. I'm personally not familiar with anything quite like this, so thank you for, for bringing it into the world. Um, <laughs> Trust me, I've searched. I really, <laughs> I really wish it existed because I really desperately yeah. need it for my own business. And uh, you know, I spend a lot of time looking for stuff and going through things like Etsy or eBay or Craigslist, and a lot of times uh, the sellers actually aren't listing all their inventory anyway, and they're encouraging me to like, hey, just tell me what you're looking for, or hey, right. come by our, our shop and look at all the things we have unlisted. So I think it actually models a lot of the, the way that it happens. But my question is, is when you start putting out your purchasing intent and start saying, hey, I'm looking for this type of thing, do you have it? Really, it's, it shouldn't be the seller, in my opinion, who's finding that stuff for you. It's actually a middleman. And so I'm wondering, what role does the middleman and the person going and finding the stuff you're looking for amongst other sellers play in your ecosystem? Well, I guess I'm kind of confused on how do you describe the middleman? Well, if you're saying you're looking for something, right? Mm -hmm. If you're asking a vendor, hey, do you have this thing I have, they're only checking their own inventory. But a lot of people who are active buyers in any market know the inventory of other people, for example. And so if I'm out buying something and I'm having someone search for me, oh, okay. I, don't, I don't want to ask the car dealer, hey, which 
you know, Land Rovers do you have? I want to ask the middleman, hey, go to all the dealers and get me a survey. The same way that when I'm shopping for an apartment, I hire a locator, right? I don't, I don't just go to the apartment building and be like, what units do you have? Okay, uh, so to be honest, I hadn't thought about that uh, this, per, this particular angle, but um, one thing that could be done is that if you have a small business or even a large business, that you could sign up on your account and basically say, I want to have these other people's kind of act as a distributor or a proxy for my searches. So they too will receive the same notifications and have an opportunity to engage the customer on my behalf. Of course, we'd have to charge for that though. <laughs> I want this to be a, I really think of this as an app that is like a, it levels the playing field for people who are in small business. If you don't have an online voice, then I think this is an opportunity for people that are new with new small businesses who don't yet have websites or an online presence to get out there. Thank you.